Hey guys, Phil here at Wood Tree Farm. I figured I'd do a little video on the business side of things. Since we started this YouTube channel, I've always wanted part of the channel to be about our business and setting up this business from scratch. So along the way, I've shared some details about like how we've set up our tree lot and what we learned about kind of merchandising our trees. And I shared how much money we made during Christmas and I shared how much money we've invested up to this point in previous videos. So in this video, I wanted to share a little bit about some other ways besides Christmas trees that we've made some money with the property and ways that we will continue to make money in the future. So the first and foremost, and I'll be completely transparent, we make a little bit of money off of these YouTube videos. Now, for the first year that I produced videos, I didn't make a cent from YouTube. So in order to earn money from YouTube, you have to have a certain number of, of subscribers and you have to have a certain amount of watch time on all of your videos in a given period of time in a year so uh, once I was able to get to that point I started earning a little bit of money and my first few months earning money I only earned maybe about a hundred dollars a month and the last several months I've earned uh, between 250 and, and 300 dollars a month so there's a tiny bit of money there in all of these videos but anyone who's really doing the math on what it takes to do all of these videos it's uh, you know an effective hourly wage of like two or three dollars an hour once you factor in the time that I spent filming, editing, and publishing each of these videos. But uh, yeah, just to be completely transparent, we make a little bit of money. So a couple thousand dollars a year off of YouTube is nothing to sneeze at. So the other ways that we make money out here, I've shared with you in previous videos. If you've been following along, you saw that we did a spring fest last year. We did a fall fest last year. Uh, both of those we're not going to do this year because of COVID. Um, all of the thing, all the things that we had going on with each of those events was uh, we had a lot of games and activities and things that require kind of handling of toys and games and things like that and we just don't want to be doing that out here so uh, we did this year a wildflower foraging event and that was pretty neat we actually didn't charge admission or anything we just had a donation box out and we managed to collect a little bit of money during that event we were only open four hours there really wasn't much put into that event from our perspective but a point of being it made a little bit of money. Next is our wildflowers and sunflowers. And uh, if you've been following along this year, you've seen that we planted sunflowers. We did about a quarter acre of sunflowers and we did a few hundred square feet of zinnias. This was our first year doing zinnias, our second year doing sunflowers. Last year's sunflower patch was uh, less than, it was about 20% of this year's patch. So this year's patch was five times bigger than last year's patch. And um, we definitely learned something about trying to scale it up and next year I know how we're gonna make that even better but we opened this past weekend for the first time offering flowers uh, for people to come in and cut their own sunflowers cut their own zinnias and we sold the sunflowers for two dollars a stem and we sold the zinnias for two two blooms for one dollar and in a three hour event we managed to do a few hundred dollars in sales for that and they actually picked clean all of the sunflowers that we had in bloom the way we planted the sunflowers it was not um uh, we basically planted all of our flowers over the course of three weekends. So the whole patch wasn't in bloom at once. And next year we're going to do things different. Um, I think we're going to plant like half of it one weekend, half of it the next. But we're going to scatter the blooms out over the entire field so that the entire patch looks like it's in bloom at once rather than having these little uh, blocks of blooms like we have right now. But anyway, that has nothing really to do with how we make money. I think it'll just make our patch more attractive for next year and it'll give us the opportunity to bring more people in at once in a shorter period of time because there will be more blooms available at once. The final way recently that we've been able to make a little bit of money here with the property is by opening the property up to photographers. And in the last few weeks, since the sunflowers have been uh, blooming and since there's been other wildflowers blooming, uh, we've had a couple hundred dollars in bookings for uh, photographers to come out. Right now we're only charging $20 an hour, which I think is extremely reasonable, probably even too low. Um, it's lower than anything else that I'm aware of in the region region as far as uh, private property open for photographers. Of course, there's plenty of other places where photographers can go for free, like parks and, and other public places. But uh, as far as private places go, there really aren't that many around that open up to photographers. And we have a really unique setting here and some unique backdrops in um, 
uh, different, you know, photography opportunities that people can't get at any other public places around here. So in the future, you know, we want to build that up even more. We've had a lot of interest. I think we can charge more per hour than we are, but uh, you know, I want to get our name out there. I want to get people here to start taking some photos and sharing those photos with clients and prospective clients. And that will only help kind of build our name in the future. So kind of a double edged thing there. The photographers to us aren't really like making us a huge amount of money and right now it's more about kind of getting our the photographers are getting our name out there for us as they share their photos on social media and uh, put their examples of their photos taken on our property in their own portfolios to share with prospective clients so uh, all in all just this kind of spring and summer season this year we've managed to do through wildflowers photographers sunflowers zinnias um, you know a couple thousand bucks and you know as a Christmas tree farmer who is shelling everything out of their own pocket for the first five to seven years before Christmas trees are ready I'm pointing over there because that's in case you don't know our Christmas tree field is right over there across the pond and all those little trees that are this big are gonna take easily six or seven years before we can turn that into revenue in the future so uh, any little thing that we can do out here to make a little bit of money it's just gonna offset losses for the next several years while we continue to invest in building the Christmas tree part of this business which will likely always be the biggest revenue driver uh, unless we do something crazy out here like build a big event center or something but that's not really on the roadmap I think the biggest revenue driver long term for us will continue to be Christmas trees and in the short term we're gonna look at some of these other things to offset our losses and just you know, you know improve cash flow just a little little bit while we continue to um, you know fund this business completely out of our own income and our own savings so uh, if you guys got any questions about what we do here and how we make money and all that kind of stuff leave those in the comments I'm pretty transparent um, there's been a lot of people over the last year and a half or so since we started making videos uh, reach out to us saying they're interested in starting a Christmas tree business and um, you know I've answered a, dozens maybe hundreds of questions uh, over the the last uh, number of years and, and that's fine I mean if I can be uh, a resource to people who are looking to do this kind of thing I'm more than happy to do that and I'm also producing these videos to share with you what we learn along the way so uh, by all means if you got questions leave those in the comments or send me a note on Facebook or in our email or whatever we can be reached and we're responsive on all of those channels and I don't know if you can hear in the back Background, but we do have a photographer here right now which is actually what made me think about making this video so uh, right across the way I don't know if we'll be able to see him we'll see if we can zoom in on him while they're over there they're in the sunflower patch taking some photos let's see they're actually over in the zinnias which is just over behind those trees I want to take those trees out eventually and we're not gonna be able to see him but there's a sunflower patch way over there. You can see a few blooms. The blooms are all facing away from us right now. They tend to face towards the east. So you're not really seeing the bright sunflower heads, but there's a bunch out there. All right, well, thanks again, guys. Give this video a like if you enjoyed it, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.